So as you can see here, we have eight elements to choose from. Iron, selenium, magnesium, that's an Mg, carbon, copper, zinc, lead, and cobalt. Let's take a close look at each one. So iron you see right here. Uh, selenium. Magnesium. Carbon. Basically coal, but we're going to treat it as purely elemental. It's well over 90% pure carbon, so we're going to cheat a little bit on this one. Copper, zinc, lead, and cobalt. You can pick whichever four you want. Hopefully we'll get some variety between groups and we can wind up pooling our data results together and really coming up, come up with a pretty solid uh, data set that definitely illustrates uh, periodic trends. So this is of course up to your group. I have more than what is in this tray, but we're definitely gonna wanna use some small samples. So, here is some 2-molar hydrochloric acid. This is very reactive stuff and definitely something that we want to take quite seriously. Um, hydrochloric acid is uh, used a lot and it's probably the concentrated acid that's most used in high school and college chemistry. Although it is, uh, can be quite corrosive and, and unhealthy for us, there are other acids out there that can really pack an even stronger punch and we don't use those unless absolutely necessary. So let's take a look at what hydrochloric acid can actually do. So I'm gonna spritz a little bit of hydrochloric acid on this piece of limestone. This actually comes from uh, the wall of the stadium at school. And as you can see, it reacts pretty darn well with limestone and you can see a lot of fizz happening here which as we've learned last week tends to be evidence of a chemical change. Um, the most uh, probably the most appropriate vessel for doing this experiment will be through a series of test tubes for each one of our four runs that we're doing. Um, I have test tube sets of different sizes. We're not going to get way too worried about the particular volume as long as we have a de you know decent samples and some room to add our acid. Uh, these are like can hold up to I believe 50 milliliters and then I have some that do 25. Um, either is fine for what we're doing but we do definitely want to scale uh, the amount of our substances that we use uh, to the um, uh, to the volume of the uh, test tubes uh, to be appropriate there. So uh, there should be some obvious considerations that would take place there. Now let's move on to what's actually going to happen in these reactions. So in the cases of all four reactions, we, 